The most mispriced thing on the market currently is Ethereum ETF, Ethereum itself and Ethereum Layer 2s. Soilana is a fucking scam, is a VC pump and dump with influencers supporting the narrative to take as much money from retail as they only can. We do know that in general markets are a tool to take money out of retail, right? But Soilana is just on the next level. Influencers that are pushing people to base right now would not succeed. We will have a huge capitulation to time and I will be buying my bread under 100 million market cap. And we will also tap into a strategy that I'm using that actually provides me with an option to have more exposure to the market using less capital, which I was quite successful with thus far. And I think the more we go into the bull run, the more successful I would be using this strategy as well. The one thing that, when used properly, can differentiate your gains on this market heavily. It might be the difference between 5x and 50x on your portfolio. And let's also figure out if the correction is over. Or are we going deeper? Are we going down? Don't we have people who are sidelined that want to buy even from these levels? Are they so greedy? So many people are so, so greedy. They don't want to buy at these levels already. They did not want to buy Arbitrum at 1.4 bucks. Before we start, I would like to remind that I'm giving away 300 bucks in each video. In order to be eligible for giveaway, you need to be my referral on BitGet. You need to complete the QIC and you need to deposit at least 100 bucks. And all of the tokens I'm talking about are available on BitGet centralized exchange. If you would like to trade with me, you can use my referral link under each and every video and you would be eligible for up to 30,000 sign up bonus. We still definitely have this topic on the marketplace that no one is actually using Ethereum. Ethereum transactions are so, so expensive. Solana is way better and things like that. I'm here to actually tell you that Ethereum right now is the most mispriced blue chip asset in crypto at this stage. I think Ethereum ETF is mispriced. I think Dinkan upgrade is mispriced. I think Mindshare is mispriced at this stage. And market will definitely be showing appreciation in price of Ethereum and the whole layer 2 ecosystem. Despite the fact, are we actually going to get ETF in May or not? And I think we might be actually getting one. Do you think BlackRock would be opening a hundred million dollars fund on Ethereum if they would not be expecting to get Ethereum ETF in May? You can respond to this question by yourself. Here is my post from today's morning. Ethereum ETF and Ethereum Layer 2 is the most mispriced thing on the marketplace right now. Mindshare. Loan your fucking Arbitrum conservatively. And I'm also showing the loan that I opened this morning at 165 entry price with $15,000 margin with 3x leverage. Because I'm quite conservative on this market. The main thing for me is not to lose money and then obviously to make money as well. And I do also have enough risk because my meme coins already. I do believe that Ethereum and the largest layer 2 with the largest TVL at this stage is mispriced heavily. I do believe they will be surging up in price like crazy and it should be happening quite soon as well. Despite the unlocks, despite all the things as well, VCs need liquidity to pump and dump. The only thing that they are doing on this market is pumping and dumping projects. They need liquidity, they need people to sell their tokens too. They need someone to buy. Therefore, they need to spend some money for marketing, for influencers, to actually make sure that people would be buying into Arbitrum. I believe the main wave would be happening closer to the end of the cycle, but following the fact that Wintermute was buying out Arbitrum like crazy during this dip, I do believe that short term Arbitrum and Layer 2s on Ethereum in general would be doing very, very well. And it's also very, very interesting that I've been talking about Ethereum, about gaming, about AVAX, about ordinals for quite some time at this stage. And it's very, very interesting to see the meta changing and what was required to actually change the meta on the market is the reset, is a correction. If you're an OG on this channel, you know that initially it actually was titled Stan the Meta Man. 
It's very, very interesting to see the meta switching currently. A lot of people are screaming about base and base is also very, very bullish for Ethereum because people are asking, what is the coin on base? And they are receiving a response, Ethereum. But I will talk about base a bit later in the video as well. Let's actually return to the topic of Solana just for a little bit. Let's face it, Solana is actually bad for crypto as a whole. It promotes degeneracy and gambling while supporting scammers and criminals. You could nuke the whole chain to zero and we'd all be better off in the long term. Very, very interesting take. I do think that something like this happening would definitely help the whole space long term. And it's very, very interesting what actually going to happen moving forward with Solana as well. It did not feel right from the beginning, but obviously if you made money on Solana, congrats to you. I think all the retail that came into crypto through Solana, through these memes, in the recent crash, man, their money was just taken away from them. I also saw an opinion on Twitter that Solana is moving very, very technically, very, very beautifully. Why do you think it's moving like this? Because market maker is drawing it exactly to be the most appealing for retail users. Let's see what's going to happen with the chain. Let's see how it will actually be performing moving forward. I do think that it's a giant VC pump and dump as well. In general, most of layer ones and layer two projects, they're just giant VCs pop and dumps in the first place. Solana is just the first one of them from previous cycle and previous cycle. It was moving very, very beautifully. It's very, very interesting to see how Solana would be doing closer to the end of the cycle. The only thing I can say from my end that I won't be touching the token of the ecosystem myself. If we go up, Upside, I believe, is limited, like max 3-4x from these levels. And it also might be that we would be going down or maybe with some pumps and there will be people screaming, buy into Solana, buy into Solana, and they would essentially be creating liquidity for VCs to dump Solana on retail because they need this liquidity creation. Exactly as at the end of the last cycle, people were screaming, Solana is 150 bucks, buy into this thing, it's such a great discount. And then it went down to $7 because VCs, in order to dump, they are not dumping 200k, 500k, 1 million, 5 million. They are not dumping these amounts of money. They are dumping way more and they need liquidity to be created. They need other people, retail specifically, being persuaded that this thing is going to go up, that we are seeing discounts currently, that we should be buying into Solana at this stage. I believe that Solana meta might be coming to an end, short term end. Let's see if it actually would be able to revive as well. Because memes on Solana, they still might be doing quite well. The casino is not going to go anywhere. Let's also actually go through the reasons of the recent crash correction as well. Too much leverage, funding matters. Well, funding is actually a very, very interesting metric on the marketplace because it's the only one metric that cannot fool you. That's the only one metric that you can always actually listen to. And that's the only one metric that will be providing you with proper feedback all the time. A very, very interesting piece of metric as well. If you see the funding is high for multiple days, it's very, very high. We definitely should be seeing something happening. A very, very nice signal to actually focus on in the market as well. Ethereum driving market south. Market decided ETF not passing. Very, very interesting. I do think that people are actually front running this part. I do think that people are too bearish on Ethereum. And I do think that the market is heavily mispricing Ethereum and layer twos on Ethereum specifically at this stage. I do think they will melt faces. They will surge like crazy. I do think we actually have nice chances to get an approval of ETF in May. And even if we not, even if we won't get the approval, just because of the mind share. You need to understand the concept of the mind share. If some people are speaking about one thing, about something on the market, it means that the mind share of this thing is large. You probably saw and understood for yourself. You probably felt it as well that Solana mind share has decreased heavily. After 200 bucks, you basically just came on Solana. You don't give a fuck about Solana anymore. You had sex, you came you are moving, you are moving away, you are moving further. No one cares about Solana. 
It's post not clarity that the whole market just got on Solana. Maybe a market would want to fuck Solana one more time in one month, in three months, in four months, in five months, right? But no one knows essentially what's going to happen. And everyone pretty much is speaking and thinking about Ethereum and layer twos as well at this stage. Concept of mindshare is very, very important. A lot of people were shitting on Solana in the summer, at the start of autumn. It pretty much melted faces. I do believe the same thing should be happening with Ethereum as well. And Ethereum is pretty nice from the point of view that we had BTC catching up to all-time highs because S&P 500 actually printed new all-time high as well. And Ethereum should definitely be catching up to all-time highs of Ethereum as well. Imagine the upside, like all-time highs is 4.6, 4.8k. Right now we are at 3.4. Imagine how well my bobo bag would actually be doing once Ethereum will be catching up to its all-time high. Crazy things. Negative BTC ETF inflows. I do actually think that people will stop caring about negative BTC ETF inflows the same way that the market stopped caring about first several days of Grayscale actually selling their BTC. I do think it's going to get priced in and no one will stop caring if this thing will continue to stay in place. I do think that market will very, very quickly just stop caring about this thing. It will get priced in and we will essentially move on because long term BTC ETF, we just saw so, so little, so, so little influence. Interesting thing, because the more we go, the more I see projections in the market, like 100K, 120K, 150K, this market will be fooling everyone one more time. And a lot of people, they do actually have PTSD from not taking more profits last cycle or from putting some profits into some scams and essentially losing them all after that. I do think that people will be very, very aggressively taking their profits this cycle. And I do think it will actually result in them taking profits too early. I do expect the main trick of this cycle the main thing, how this cycle will essentially fool a bunch of people and still take their money is essentially us seeing way larger prices than we expect. Some people are speaking about 700k Bitcoin and other things as well. I do expect us to actually surge like crazy. And the issue with these people would be is that they would, they, is that they would be taking the profits too early and then they would be seeing that Shit, if I didn't take these profits, I would already have a 2x, a 3x, a 4x. And for larger portfolios, these are crazy numbers. If you're taking, for example, 4 million out of the market, 2x more, you have 8 million. 3x more, you have 12 million. And you didn't have to do anything. Imagine how crazy it will fuck with the heads of market players. I do believe we would be seeing a huge FOMA. I do believe we would see people re-entering eventually as well. And this way, I do think how this cycle will be taking money from the larger amount of people as well. Solana shitcoin mania, it went too far. Makes sense. I do believe we are in post not clarity in terms of Solana. And I do believe it will continue for quite some time. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the market. I'm feeling the atmosphere. I'm, I'm feeling what other people are thinking and what other people are essentially feeling as well. Very, very interesting. Coming back to our Ethereum ETF thesis and why I think it is the most mispriced thing at this stage. We do have to understand that markets are actually forward looking as well. And I think currently markets, they start to price in the fact that this part of the decision of Ethereum ETF in May, sooner or later, it will still get approved and news about blackrock of creating a fund of a hundred million dollars on ethereum specifically not on solana man it's so bullish it's so bullish for this ecosystem i have so much to share this thing would be doing so so well my boba bag would be doing so so well it's so crazy it's so crazy to understand and so crazy to see this early 
in this cycle. There is so much hate towards Ethereum in this platform. I'm just chilling and ignoring the noise as rollups mature, blobs drive transaction costs below faster and cheaper L1s, and industry leaders like Coinbase choosing to build on Ethereum as the gold standard for on-chain operations. If you are heavy on Ethereum, collecting yield and not using leverage, then time is on your side. Patience here will reward you handsomely. Just by reading this message, I feel like the guy has tens of millions in Ethereum. Dinkan is scaling Ethereum. Coinbase and BlackRock are building on it. But Anand is bearish because he read a tweet claiming that ETFs are not coming this year. I honestly believe that market makers and founders of the projects and VCs, some of them, they're creating this narrative, this manipulation at this stage, that Ethereum is dead, L2s, we're not going to see them surging up. There are a bunch of unlocks. <laughs> they will be dumping their unlocks right now at this stage. I do believe they are buying as much as they can. They're trying to suppress this growth as much as they can because they do understand what's coming. They do understand what type of information. Imagine the quality of information. Someone like a market maker on Arbitrum, like Wintermute, would actually have about the market. People close to BlackRock, people close to Coinbase, largest centralized exchange in the US with the most, with the highest purchasing power, with the users with highest purchasing power, is building layer two on Ethereum. And you actually need Ethereum in the first place to bridge it to base and use base as well. It's so crazy how market is actually mispricing it at this stage. I'm not going to tell you it's a done deal, but there are Ethereum ETF facts as I see them. CFTC has declared Ethereum to be a commodity and previous SEC chairs have also. Ethereum has the CME features with sufficient liquidity and years of runtime. Ethereum has futures-based ETFs. No other crypto assets have these attributes except for BTC and Ethereum. That's very, very interesting because one of the arguments of why they would essentially be a proven Ethereum ETF is because they already have futures ETF opened and they actually went in court for BTC and they were proven wrong. SEC was proven wrong that they should open BTC spot ETF because they have futures ETF approved already. We have exactly the same situation for Ethereum. BTC ETF already paved the legal precedent for a spot ETF in court. Gary keeps losing crypto cases and in increasingly dramatic fashion each time, with the SEC being sanctioned for misconduct in the debt box case in the US District Court just yesterday. So they're getting sanctioned for the fact they don't want to approve crypto. They're being fined here and there because they are blocking these things. It's very, very interesting. I was not facing a lot of democracy in my life, you know. Gary can't politically afford another capricious enforcement action he knows he can't win. Fidelity yesterday adds staking income to the ETF, likely not payable to customers at first, but still, as maybe something they are willing to give up in negotiations, with the SEC as a face-saving maneuver allowing for approval. Very, very interesting as well. They're adding some ammo into their weapons to make sure that they will be able to use some of this ammo to give it up, give it away and essentially get something in response. Approval of Ethereum ETF, right? So while it's not certain, most people here have priced the ETF at zero probability over the past week. This seems like an overreaction and also like an opportunity. ETF in May or soon thereafter seems very much on the table. That's one of the reasons of why I'm saying that Ethereum ETF and Ethereum layer 2s are the most mispriced sector on the market right now. They will be surging like crazy. This would be happening. Mind sure is there. Market will be appreciating these assets. I'm telling you a hundred percent. And I have my ultimate Ethereum ETF play since August. I will be capitalizing like crazy on it with the picture of the bear that I hold. I hold and I will continue holding as well. And imagine all the inflows of capital once Ethereum ETF will actually get approved. Wow, man, it's so crazy. It's so crazy what, what actually expects us. Because before World War III, before largest catalyst, largest conflict in human history, in modern human history. There needs to be the largest cash out. They need to have money 
to start this war. They are do planning. They are they are planning this war. They are planning to cash out as heavy as they can before this essentially would be happening. I do believe we would see crazy cycle and the change of the world order right after that. Do you know this song? We all living in America, right? Because we are still all living in America. This song was written in 90s. And there are a lot of people. There are a lot of countries that are not agreeing with that. And very, very soon they will try to argue on this thesis. But before the worst events happening, we will have the best events happening. We will have the largest bull cycle. So they would actually be able to cash out. Because most of the negative news, they are usually coming at the most bottom parts of the cycle. And the current cycle started in January of 2023. So we still have about 1.5 to 2.5 years at this stage. Contrary to popular belief, Ethereum has a ton of builders leading the charge. No, they are not just a bunch of podcasters. Here is a short and incomplete list of some of the prominent Ethereum builders. Layer 1, bunch of guys. Layer 2, bunch of guys. Protocols, modular, research, smart contract tooling. There are many more. Moral of the story, Ethereum has by far the largest community of builders. You have to follow the engineers. You have to follow the the developers. Who you have on Solana? Scam Anonymous founders? Imagine the level of skill. Imagine the level of competence. These guys on Ethereum, most of them, they're crazy, crazy rich already. They don't need to scam retail out of their money at this stage. They just want to use a great technology, a very, very good piece of technology to actually make the world a better place. Because most of them, they just love this shit. They don't need to scam single mothers out of the diapers money we scam pop and dumps solana meme tokens right follow the builders follow the developers this is what matters in this space this is tech investing tech startups investing the end game you're going to have probably two maybe three general purpose l2s become massive hubs for ethereum universe each will secure hundreds of billions of dollars in value and you'll be able to do almost any trade or financial transaction you need on any of them with huge liquidity, low fees and great user experience. All of them will scale use and demand for Ethereum as programmable money and as a collateral asset. They'll work as well or better than many monolithic blockchains. When you need to bridge between them occasionally, it will be fast and cheap and there will be several domain-specific L2s for things like gaming and many app-specific L2s beyond that which can hyperscale scale their user bases. The future looking pretty good and the haters are going to find it harder and harder to fade when the soon-to-be parabolic onboarding numbers get in the way. Base for retail, Arbitrum. I think Arbitrum is going to be the top layer 2 of this cycle. And maybe something like Matic for gaming, just because of the partnership with Beam and with IMX as well. I do think you have to understand some things as well. Me being in custom software development for six plus years, if not even more, because I've been for six years as a business owner and many more years as a software engineer myself. Things are not getting built in one year, in two years, in three years, in four years. They're not getting built with a team of like two people, three people, four people. They take multiple years. They take multiple iterations. They take very, very experienced team members, tech people, different roles on the team because you don't want to have like seven software engineers on the team. You want to have six software engineers and at least one QA specialist. And this one QA specialist would improve the work of these six developers so, so much because he will actually keep them accountable. It's a huge advantage. It's a very, very crazy advantage to actually have these type of development resources and development engineers been building on this chain already. And the fact it's decentralized. And the fact it's decentralized. The fact it was not stopping. The fact it's not some centralized garbage, right? It's so, so bullish for this space. If you build something on Ethereum, no one pretty much can break your thing. No one can do nothing. Obviously, if you develop bad smart contracts with some exploits and things like that. But in general, it's so, so bullish. It's so, so exciting to actually build on the blockchain like this. And with all these layer twos, with all these possibilities, I just 
just me saying that I want to open up Solidity and write some code myself, write some smart contracts myself. It's so, so bullish. I feel so much pleasure from a thought of actually building something on Ethereum. So crazy. It's starting to smell like L2 season. Definitely, I feel that as well. Standard Chartered Analysts are bullish on Ethereum. They're predicting that Ethereum could hit 14k by the end of 2025. The analysts also think that the spot Ethereum ETFs should be approved by May. Very, very interesting, but you know, some people might say that this opinion is too bullish because all these people at the end of the last cycle, they were screaming about the 100k Bitcoin and things like that. But I do believe actually something like this might be happening. I do see a future like that following the events that I'm actually predicting to occur right after this crazy bull run. Wars require money. You cannot participate in wars if you don't have money. Thank God I sold Ethereum at 4k. I didn't. Thank God I sold sold at 200 bucks. I didn't. Thank God I tbid meme coins after the pre-sale meta. I didn't. Thank God I sold the top and have stables to buy the dip. I don't. Thank God I killed every rotation and timed it perfectly. I didn't. So it does not specifically connect it to Ethereum scenario in the Ethereum case, but this is something interesting I wanted to share. And this is something that I was sharing in the previous videos as well. You have to understand your upside. You have to understand your downside as well. And you probably see all these people saying that, oh, I was able to buy the top perfectly. And right now I can buy two times, three times, four times X of the tokens that I actually had. Good for you if you actually had done this. But I think it's a very, very dangerous behavior. And I think that cycle will anyway take money of 90% of people on the marketplace. And it's very, very interesting that currently it might actually teach you to sell on the dip, right? To buy back lower and things like that. And next time when this dip will be happening, you would think, oh yeah, I already saw this. I know this thing already. I would actually sell now and buy back lower a bit later as well. And cycle will fuck you up. It will just take your money and it will decrease your positions heavily from the positions that you had before. I'm not selling anything. I'm not playing this game. I don't. I'm not risking tens of thousands of percent in upside. Protecting 20, 30, 40, 50 percent downside. You have to understand the risks. You have to play poker in this game. You need to do things that statistically will be providing you with better outcomes. I'm holding. I'm waiting. I will be taking some profits a bit later in this cycle, but I do think that this cycle would actually be melting faces. And I do think that most people will be wrong anyway. I do think that people are very, very cautious. I do think that people expect a shorter cycle. I do think we will be pumping like crazy. And all the people that would be taking profits too early, they would be re-entering the market eventually losing some of the profits and some of the money they made as well. And the better this cycle will be, the larger this cycle will be, the more money everyone would be making, the more people will be dying in a couple years after the cycle. Boy is saying we are moving to base. It's very, very interesting. Do you remember what I was saying a couple of videos before about the herd of ships that are just being directed for one narrative into another and then being cut by each and every narrative and killed for meat as well. This is exactly what is happening. He's probably using this GIF as a joke, but it's a very, very interesting programming that is happening here as well. Retail and all these digits on Solana, they're being compared to ships. And you know ships. People help them. People protect them. They have dogs to protect the ships as well. They help them to move from one region to another. Where is the better grass? Where they can actually feed more and better. For the whole reason to kill them, to eat the meat and to cut the fur as well in the process. Very, very interesting. Just, just to know that I wanted to share from my end. Several thoughts about base at this stage. I still think that market is front-running base narrative very, very much. This narrative of Coinbase is actually being digested by more and more people. And the more and more people actually understand 
this narrative, the fact that Coinbase have the largest amount of users, they will be onboarding people on base chain. That's why everything on base chain will, will essentially be surging up like crazy. And I think more and more people, they start to understand the thesis. And when on the market, more and more people start to understand the thesis, asymmetric upside for the thesis actually diminishes, actually evaporates. I think this is something that is happening currently. I think some people are already getting post not clarity in terms of the coin base, in terms of the base and things like that. Maybe I'm getting it too early, too soon, but I believe with time more and more people would essentially be understanding this thesis as well. And it will definitely get priced in. We also see directed shills from the group of influencers on shilling bread starting this morning. They're just post from certain influencers on bread, buy bread, get into bread and things like that. I do think that influencers won't be able to actually focus the attention of the public. I don't think that Solana Degens would essentially come to base in the same herds. Main reason for that is because a lot of them, they are poor again, because more experienced players on the market, they already took all the money, right? At the same time, it's still different user experience, it's something new, it's something with Ethereum, you would naturally be losing people in this user flow because people are lazy in general. And it's definitely a bit of the new user experience as well. And some people are saying that memes on base, they're not that great and things like that because space is definitely less developed than meme space on Solana with all this degeneracy as well. I do expect that we are at the stage where more and more people are starting to understand this thesis and they don't get hard no more on this thesis. All right, Coinbase is largest exchange. Yeah, they will be onboarding largest amount of users. So what? I don't care. Therefore, it actually been priced in already. And I do expect we should be seeing a correction after we will have no more people left that actually get hard about this thesis. And then we would be seeing a correction on this means before the next wave. And during this correction, I would be planning to enter my bread position as well. I kind of see that bread might be, I kind of see that base might be this attempt of Solana Degens to kind of start degeneracy in this new meta of this part of the cycle after the correction. For some reason, I just feel that they won't be able to achieve the same success as they basically had with Solana recently. Let's see what's going to happen. I'm just sharing what I feel at this stage. And I don't see base as, you know, like this pretty woman in the club. I see more and more people getting post not clarity because this thesis is actually in the market for quite some time already. More and more people, they start to understand this thesis. More and more, this thesis starts to get priced in. There is still a bunch of time till this airdrop. It's not going to come in six months from now. It's so, so crazy. We will have a huge capitulation due to time and I will have my entries. I'm telling it to you one more time. So following the strategy that I wanted to outline, strategy is connected to 3x leverage loans. It's connected to the fact how you can actually increase your positions heavily with lower amount of capital how you can be taking your initials out of these positions without decreasing the size of the position itself. Very, very important thing because if on spot you're taking your initials out, you are actually decreasing the position. On futures, with margin, with leverage, you can actually be taking your initials out without decreasing the size of your position. I also would like to announce that soon I will be doing a full guide, a full overview on how to actually open this type of positions, how to take your initials out, how to decrease margin, how to play around with them, the things that you can actually be doing and how to make sure you won't be losing money with leverage, how to make sure that you would actually understand the tool and be able to use this tool to your advantage. I was opening a lot of leverage positions since December of last year, two to three to four months. We had multiple dips through that time. I was not liquidated in any of them. I'm actually holding all of my positions at this stage. And in terms of margin, maybe all of them, they have like 70, 80K in terms of the margin that I put initially. And my exposure into the market with these positions at this stage, 
might be around four hundred five hundred thousand dollars at this stage therefore if my tokens are doing a 2x i'm getting 500k in profit i'm not getting a 2x on 70 or 80k initially invested very very interesting thing that you can actually achieve with leverage and it's all pretty safe at the same time i was not liquidated once maybe it might be a different picture if we would actually be going lower as low as 55 50 but i still have cash on the side i have stable coins if we would be going lower to these numbers i would just be adding more margin into my positions decreasing my liquidation price and making sure that i'm safe because my goal in the first place is to protect the capital is to follow first rule of investing by warren buffett not to lose money and only then i would essentially be making them after that at the same time heavily increasing my exposure into the marketplace i do like and love my strategy a lot because i'm longing layer ones and layer twos main tokens of the ecosystem i'm buying meme coins on spot in these ecosystems to make sure that i will be able to capitalize on exit liquidity on retail coming into these ecosystems as well and at the same time i'm buying into low caps large positions into low caps with like 20 million market cap 30 million market cap 40 million market cap i'm entering these i'm entering with volumes in these gems as well these are three things that i'm doing on this market and they are definitely providing very very good results thus far and i think the more we would be moving forward into the cycle the better results they would essentially be providing as well you can see with pepper for example i was opening this loan with twenty thousand dollars margin i already took all of this margin and at this stage i can pretty much increase the leverage and take more margin out of this position as well this way i would essentially have this position for free and i have exposure to the market at two hundred and thirty three thousand dollars at this stage out of initially twenty thousand dollars therefore if pepe would be doing a 2x from these levels i would be plus two so i would be plus 230k in profit as well similar things with pixel as well i think initial margin on pixel was twenty thousand dollars as well it surged up so i increased my leverage i took out my margin i can be opening up new loans with my margin as well i took some profits from this position too and this way i can pretty much have more exposure into the marketplace as well sui initial margin here was fifteen thousand dollars it pretty much went up from my entry and i took some of the margin out of sui as well my arbitrary loan is not doing well at this stage i was opening at two dollars and market price right now is 1.6 bucks but my liquidation price is 1.16 it's very very low i don't think i would actually be liquidated on this position therefore i would still have large exposure to the marketplace i added margin into this loan as well and i would be just waiting sitting there comfortably it's very very similar to spot position as well i'm just having more exposure due to the fact i'm using leverage here and starknet as well which is a layer two on ethereum two thousand dollars in negative profit at this stage but my liquidation price is 1.46 very very distant target from the current levels as well and if we would be surging lower i would just be adding more margin i would just be waiting comfortably in this position and once we will return once we will surge up i would be i should be doing very very well i also opened another arbitrum loan from these levels with fifteen thousand dollars in margin and 3x leverage this morning so similar position to this one just from 165 level for arbitrum as well let's see how this thing would actually go and move forward as well as mentioned i'm specifically entering this low leverage positions to make sure that i am safe and in the same time i have more money on the side to add them as margin if we would be going lower some things on the correction i don't think that we would be heavily going lower at this stage i do think that the market changed i do think that right now we have crazy inflows we have the access for institutions to get into crypto as well i do think we should be seeing crazy bull cycle and it should be way way crazier than most people expect at this stage and most people they 
have this target like 1, 100k, 120, 150, I think we should be seeing something very, very crazy this cycle as well. And in terms of the corrections, you need to understand what a correction means. You need to understand that if something like Ethereum goes down to, let's say, 2,500 bucks, that means that there are zero people in the world, no one, that want to buy Ethereum at $2,501. No one, no one would want to buy Ethereum at these prices, right? There are no people. We don't have millions of people sidelined. Corrections are just not some magical things. Corrections are happening because people on the market are deciding for themselves that I will be able to buy lower. We will be able to go lower. I don't think that in this market with the ETF inflows, with a large amount of more experienced players on the market, with a lot of influencers are screaming currently that by the deep and things like that, influencers, they were not so experienced in previous cycles. In previous cycles, they were more behaving like a retail. During the corrections, they were scared as well. During the corrections, they did not know what to do. That's why we had this crazy correction 70%, 80%, 60%, because people were not believing it in the market. They were very, very new to the market. They did not have a lot of experience in terms of the things that were happening as well. I think right now, the overall quality of market participants and the overall level of competitiveness and competition definitely went up. That's why I don't think we would be seeing larger corrections as well. And that's why I think everyone would essentially think that they are an expert, they are a very, very good investor, they would be taking profits at 120k per Bitcoin, just to see Bitcoin at 700, just to see Bitcoin at 700k after that. And former in back into the market and lose some of the profits or larger amounts of the profits as well. Let's actually see what this reality, what this simulation actually have planned for us, right? It's not Solana, but it's still honest work, right? We have 208 people that filled out the form on the Discord. Number 15, very nice, low number, great. Winner number one, number three, wow. Very, very nice as well. One of the first supporters, they're essentially winning. That's also very, very great. Number 92. 92, 92. Winner number three. Well, that's that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching this video. We see the meta changing. We see very, very interesting things happening in the market. I do believe that ordinals should be doing well and due to runes update. I do believe that Stacks ecosystem should be doing well as well. I do believe that gaming should be doing well as well because we have some very, very nice releases in the coming couple of weeks and Avax is very, very strong at this stage. I do think it should be surging up and liquidity from Solana coming to Avax as well. And I do think that ETH is keen. And I do think that we would be seeing crazy, crazy, crazy things for Ethereum this cycle as well, starting from around now. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you tomorrow. Have a nice end of the day.